Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce the superintendent of the American International School, Mr. Raja Abhishakra. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن خير ما نستهل به حفلنا هذا قراءة مباركة لبعض الآيات الكريمة من سورة العلق لما لهذه الآيات من معان سامية ستبفي أجزل الأمل وعمق الإيمان على ما يطمح لإنجازه خرجونا في حياتهم المستقبلية اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم To render this ceremony blessed by Almighty I would like to start with a recital of some ayat from Surat Al-Alaq for the divine meanings that these ayat embody will reinforce the hope and faith our graduates need in their future endeavors. Read in the name of thy Lord and Cherisher who created, created man out of a leech-like clot. Read and thy Lord is most bountiful. He who taught the use of the pen, taught man that which he knew not. Your Excellency, Sheikh Jabir Mubarak al Hamad al Sabah, Excellency, Honorable and Distinguished Guests, AS, parents and graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to extend my heartiest welcome to you all. We are both proud and delighted to gather this evening to honor and recognize a group of fine students who have successfully completed our school's requirements for graduation. As we sincerely thank His Excellency Sheikh Jabir Mubarak al Hamad al Sabah, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, for his patronage of this commencement, I would like to announce that His Excellency chose not to deliver what we traditionally call a commencement address, letting deeds and achievements speak for themselves. No address could express more meanings and depth of feeling than watching these seniors on stage, crowning their high school years with success and readiness for further steps into their educational future. Our graduates this year belong to 20 nationalities. Although they speak 10 different languages, AIS has embraced them by a language of its own, a hidden language of communication that transcends all vernacular languages and immerses itself in all our educational practices through which students learn beyond the classroom into encompassing positive interaction among themselves. They learn to respect each other's differences and uphold mutual obligation toward their communities and the world at large. Thus, our school becomes a melting pot in which students get a well-rounded view of the world, not only the view of knowledge and understanding, but the love and desire for justice and peace and the feeling of brotherhood of man. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to elaborate on our educational achievements and professional practices and let this commencement again speak for itself. Finally, 
let me salute our parents for sustaining the constructive role they played as our partners in education. Their presence with us this evening is a testimony of their dedication and care. We truly recognize their proper guidance at home and their support in our educational practices, which sometimes go unmentioned. We truly thank them for their efforts and for all that they have done for their children. And to our graduates, I would say, remember that the luckiest, luckiest people are those who work the hardest, those who strive, contend, seek, discover, and never give up within an ethical framework of objective performance and self-esteem. We share in the pleasure of your achievements and wish you every success. And in the fulfillment of your future, don't hesitate to keep turning to your parents as from them you will always find love and support. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raja. I also would like to add my welcome to all of the parents, friends, special guests, dignitaries on this special occasion, one of the most important days of the lives of our seniors. We have a chance for a free, few brief moments anyway to kind of remember the past, to celebrate the moment and then also embrace the future. It is now my pleasure to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2001, Mr. Kareem Shalami. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable guests, Ms. Samra, Mr. Raja, Mr. Phillips, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow graduates, good evening and thank you for coming. It is with great honor and privilege that I stand before you on behalf of the graduating class of 2001. We have finally prevailed over the first hurdle of our lives. We now stand before the second, more intense, more demanding, and more uncertain challenge. Many of us still have no idea as to what lands, customs, and traditions we will be exploring in the coming years. No matter where we venture, I think we can safely say that the upcoming challenges will be some of the greatest that we will ever face in our lives. We will need to be very, very perceptive, critical, focused and self-disciplined and at the same time we must open our minds be tolerant and accommodating to our new environment academic skills are not the only key to a successful future we will also need to develop further practical skills in order to survive independently our future is as uncertain as ever and we will all struggle some of us more than others However, I'm also very confident that we will all eventually, each in our own way, succeed and overcome the pending challenges and obstacles at the beginning of our independent lives. Even though many of us may feel certain apprehension towards the future, let us just take a moment to think back to the past, to recollect all those priceless experiences that we have had with strangers,
friends, and family. And by family, I not only mean our parents and siblings, our direct family, but the entire AIS family, the students, the teachers, the administration, and the workers. The effects of each and every one of those experiences will always remain with us, and every single day of our lives, even though we may not yet realize the importance, has brought something new, more knowledge, and more skills that, we will, that will be invaluable to us in the future. There are about 104 graduating students before you tonight, representing 20 different nationalities, as Mr. Raja mentioned earlier, and speaking 11 languages, 10 or 11 languages. Um, I cannot emphasize how privileged we all are to be a part of and to learn from such a diverse group of individuals. I think we should also take this opportunity to acknowledge the efforts of all the teachers at AIS. Never before have I seen teachers dedicate and sacrifice so much for our benefit. For example, many times, teachers have spent the entire evening at the school grading assignments, or have come to school at 9 o'clock in the evening to finish grading some papers. Or sometimes they've even come to school at midnight to collect late assignments. Over the years, the unconditional affection and protection from our beloved parents, the unforgettable laps and moments with our friends and siblings, as well as the relentless devotion of our teachers, have helped develop us into our own selves. We cannot thank these people enough, because with their help in the past, we can now confidently embrace the future in open arms, as we have become individuals armed not only with an excellent education and an array of skills, but also a spiritual asset. A, sp a spiritual asset um, that, that will hopefully, with the guiding presence of God, carry us very far and toward great success. Fellow graduates, this evening lays the last footprints of our trek through the sometimes hostile and at other times caring and warm AIS environment. This evening should be cherished and enjoyed, and we should all be proud that we have survived so far. However, we should also realize that the real journey that will determine who we are and where we will be is just about to begin. Good luck, and may God bless each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. Again, it is my pleasure to introduce the salutatorian of the class of 2001, Amena Rafat. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Does the end justify the means? Machiavelli, a political theorist, believed so. Many people consider him a successful man. However, many fail to recognize that his mastery of words was used as an attempt to redeem himself through his own selfish means. With his doctrines, he has harmed many people. Was he a noble man? Some say not, but he maintains his status as a success. So is success noble? Does success represent the person, or does the person represent the success? To answer these questions, one must fully understand what the meaning of success and what constitutes an achievement. True success is building an integrated life of achievement. It is defined not by how much one has achieved, but by what the achievement is and by what means were used to reach it. Therefore, it is the means and not the end that, just, that, 
It is the means that justify the ends. In this case, success. Success is not measured by material acquisitions, but by how much you have grown as a person. It is based not on how much money you make, but on establishing a strong relationship with your creator, Allah, which is reflected via your perception of yourself and your interactions with the people around you. True success is defined by your ability to stand up for your success, by your willingness to share your success with the people around you. True success is measured by what you have offered to your society and by how you have grown as a person. When one's achievements coincide with one's person or essence, when one applies all that he or she has achieved to bettering him or herself, this is what constitutes true success. So in answer to my question, is success noble? Yes, it is. Were Machiavelli's intentions noble? No, they were not. Therefore, Machiavelli was not a successful man. I stand here today because I was labeled a success. What I have done has been considered an achievement. But am I really a success? Is my getting good grades qualifying me or entitling me to a better life? Some may think so. But looking at the graduating class of 2001, here after 12 years of hard work and dedication, can I say, can I see, can I say that we are a success? It is difficult to say. As many of us stand here today, proud of how far we have come and how much of our journey we have completed. We see this, our graduation, as the pinnacle of our lives, our highest achievement. However, we fail to recognize that graduation is merely a stepping stone or a bow directing us, hopefully, towards a straight and prosperous path. None of us knows what the future holds for us, but we all do hope for success. We all hope for a secure life filled with happiness and decorated with our many achievements. However, the means as well as the end may be unclear in some of our minds. The first step to fulfilling our ends lies in acknowledging and accepting that we do indeed have a long and tough road ahead of us. This is not to say that our futures are to be purely hardships, but in order to succeed in this world, with the technological advancements and rapid globalization occurring, one must have a clear vision. When this vision becomes clear, one's goal can be set and determined, and the path to reaching this goal can be chosen. As I have already mentioned, high school is a mere speck in the grand scheme of our lives, and we have yet to learn many things. As Allah says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, and of knowledge, you have been granted but little. One must recognize that knowledge is an ongoing process and that there is a vast sea of knowledge awaiting us that we must be ready to fully integrate into the basis that we have spent so long building. Thank you, and I wish the graduating class of 2001 the best of luck.